Boatworks today is sponsored by Total Boat and Alexia Yacht Coatings, as well as supported by the generosity from the beautiful folks over on Patreon. Thank you so much. So welcome back everybody. Hope you're having a wonderful weekend. My name is Andy with Boatworks Today and for this video and actually for the next foreseeable two or three videos, I'm going to have to be doing a little bit of a pivot here, primarily because I'm on hold waiting for materials. Now everything has been ordered and it's on its way and by no means is a Bertram project being shelved or scrapped or anything like that. Far from it. Again, it's just one of those things that I don't have the materials and I don't, I, I can't work with what I don't have. So I do have some things lined up for the next few weeks. I think you're going to find very, very interesting, especially for, well, I'll just kind of get into this more towards the end. So let's kind of work through these next few clips and then when we get towards the end, I'll let you know what the overall plan is. And I'm going to go on record and say, uh, <laughs> of all the questionable, sketchy things I've ever tried, um, I'm thinking this one might might take the cake here. Uh, so I can lift this thing no problem. Um, what I'm a little little uh, nervous about are these straps. These, <laughs> these straps are only rated for a thousand pounds. And I don't know how accurate that is. So I'm going to go hit up my neighbor, see if I can get some uh, little beefier straps. And we're gonna give this another go, but yeah, I've definitely plenty of horsepower to lift this thing up. I just, I don't want to get this thing a foot up off the ground, have one of the straps snap on me, and who knows what would go flying if that were to happen. So I'll be right back. You have got to be joking me. Well, it's off. It went smooth as smooth could be. The stupid camera turned off. The one thing I wanted to get recorded today, and I missed it. Piece of shit.
So now this little boat, it is a Rebel 16. Now I have no idea what year it is. I mean, there's no markings on the hull, no indications anywhere on there that I could find. So if I had to guess, I'd say it's probably early, mid 60s, give or take. Now this is something that I just picked up. I did a little bit of bartering with one of my uh, neighbors here. Uh, it's an abandoned boat on, on him, so a little bit of bartering back and forth, and well, now it's mine. Now, this is not going to be a, a restoration boat. Not at all. The, only, the sole intent for this is strictly going to be for doing paint demonstrations. Now, over the last uh, probably three months, well, this summer specifically, spring and summer, there have been a lot of, of projects. You know, again, people are locked up at home, and you know, they've Boating projects has been something that's really, really uh, been very, very active this season. So when you're looking at a lot of these projects, uh, w you know, especially the larger ones, when you're looking to finish them, I mean, paint is just really the obvious choice. I mean, it's so much easier to work with, more so than it is trying to spray gel coat and go through all that buffing nonsense. I've already covered, you know, kind of pros and cons on that. If you have not seen that, I'll include a video up in here in this corner. Um, but painting is just really the, the easiest and the fastest way, especially for a DIY person. Now, I've, I've done a demonstration using Alexio paint before, I mean, about a year ago, I guess. And at that time, you know, just rolling it off on these uh, little panels, I was impressed as hell. And a lot of people have used their paint over the summer, and it's just consistently gotten the same results over and over and over. Now, evidently, uh, Alexio has had a little something, something up their sleeve uh, that they've been working on for the past well, two, maybe three years, or maybe even longer, um, that potentially, is, from what I've seen, is really going to be a game changer for anybody DIY trying to you know, either repair, restore, or refurbish their boat. It's just, I'm looking forward to this. This is going to be pretty exciting. So now, this rolling additive that Alexio is coming out with, it is their A. 5018, I believe. Now, this is something that they're, they're just now trying to, you know, get it out to their distributors, and I, th I know that all the distributors, they have access to it. They may not all necessarily have it in stock quite yet, uh, but it's something that they're, they're pushing out to their distributors right now. And essentially, this is an additive that you just, you mix in with the paint, and you literally just roll it out. There's no more tipping. Uh, you can come in in, like, certain areas if, you, if the roller's just not going to fit. You come in and just, you can brush it in, but it just, it, the, the bubbles just, I was told the bubbles just literally just pop in front of your eyes <laughs> and it levels out. So this is going to be, if this actually does what, uh, you know, what I've seen uh, you know, and on a consistent basis, it is going to be a game changer. Now in the, in the past, what I've always used are these little two by two uh, foot panels that I've used for doing my demonstrations and stuff. And while it worked, it just, it wasn't real great. I mean, you really can't get, uh, you know, a, a, a real good sense of how something looks unless it's on a little bit larger scale. And that's where our little friend here is going to be coming in. Now, this is not going to be, again, like I mentioned, it's not going to be a restoration. This is strictly going to be for paint demonstrations and potentially uh, maybe holding some seminars here uh, for, you know, small groups of people, say two, three, four people at a time. Um, still working out the details on that, especially given, you know, current situation right now. I'm not having anybody in the shop, but when this, this is all going to eventually pass, and when it does, uh, this is something I'm kind of, you know, into thinking about, or, or considering, I guess. The one caveat there is that there is a slight possibility, and when I, sleep, when I say slight possibility, probably a, a fairly good chance that, uh, that my girls are going to try and talk me into actually restoring this because they've, they've seen it once. Uh, I, well, I just got it here last week. Um, but they've seen it once, and the first thing that they said is, that is the cutest boat I've ever seen. They both ran over to it, jumped up inside this before I had it flipped over. And they were, they were just <laughs> like kids in a candy shop, to be honest. They're like, we could fit like six or eight people in here. <laughs> it was pretty cute. Unfortunately, I didn't get any of it on camera. Um, but anyways, let's take a closer look at the damage and what all is going to be involved with getting this thing prepped to the point where we can actually start painting it. Because one thing uh, when it comes to paint, you know, being such a high gloss finish, is the surface that you're applying this onto, it has to be, well, as close to perfect as, as you can get it. And there's a lot of cracks on here. There's just a lot of damage. We'll cover it here. Um, but putting some paint on a, on a surface that's not prepped correctly, it's still going to look like crap. I mean, it's, it'll be shiny. It'll be a shiny turd. Uh, but it's not going to look as good as if it were completely repaired and fully fared in. So let's take a closer look at what else is going to be involved with this. 
So looking over the boat here, you can see that there's there's a few things going on. Uh, the first one being the most obvious is that really the whole boat has already been painted uh, with essentially like a rattle can spray paint. And all of that is gonna have to come off 100%. Uh, in addition to that, when you look up at, at the bow here, uh, the, the roller that this was sitting on on the trailer, uh, the little rubber grommet or thing on the roller itself, that had basically disintegrated and it had punched a hole up through the hull. So, you know, we got some glass work there. I'm just hoping that the, the foam that's inside or, you know, inside the core of this hull, hopefully that's not too saturated where it's going to really create some problems, but I guess we'll cross that bridge when we get into it. And again, looking back down the, uh, the, the further end of the boat, there's uh, scratches and scrapes everywhere all over this thing. It's been beached, well, so many times that <laughs> a lot of it has been worn down to bare fiberglass. And there's also stress cracks. So all, all of this is gonna have to basically be, I'm anticipating having to essentially reskin the entire hull, sand that all down, redo all new fairing, and just basically get this thing up to snuff so that when it's actually painted or primed and painted, uh, nothing, no blemishes are gonna print right through. So hopefully being such a small boat, this process should go fairly quick. And why I say should, because anybody who's ever worked on a boat, you know there's always a surprise waiting to just kick in the shorts right around the corner. So now in addition to playing around with this rolling additive and the, the fire and the glass work and the fairing, uh, I'm also going to be doing some experimenting with different rollers and rollers that you know some of them I haven't even used before. Uh, I'm curious to see if there's going to be one roller that essentially fits all for both prime and paint. Now in the past I've always been using these little cigar rollers made by Red Tree, the mohair ones, and they work fantastic, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they're the best. They might be, I don't know. Um, but I intend to find that out and I've got a large enough area now where I can actually play around with different rollers and sit back and say okay this was done with this type of roller and this one and versus this one and so on and so forth and really be able to do a side-by-side -side comparison as far as which rollers perform best for the certain types of materials that you're working with. Now in addition to that I've also found uh, a couple of new tricks that are new to me. I had, I had never heard of them. Um, but it's talking with Brian over at Lexiel and he's like, yeah, you gotta give this a shot. He's like, it works really, really slick. And, you know, kind of explained it to me and I'm like, why didn't I think of that? Like 15 years ago. <laughs> and anyways, so a few little extra tricks and tips that you have not seen before. And so I'm excited to share those. So that is what we're going to be working on for the next well, foreseeable two, three weeks. So I'm really looking forward to this. I'm going to be very, very curious to see uh, how this additive performs as well as, you know, like I mentioned, doing the, the little testing on these rollers. I've never done anything like this. I've never had a boat large enough where I could just play around with it like that. So really, really looking forward to it. I'm hoping you are as well. So on that note, I think I'm going to wrap this one up. Now, as always, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please hit that thumbs up button. If you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. That does make a big difference. Thank you in advance. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, please leave those down below. And I do spend about the first two, one or two hours after the video posts, uh, well, at least publicly here on, on uh, YouTube, I do spend the first, you know, probably two hours sitting here replying to as many comments as I can. Uh, so if you have any questions, comments, leave those down below. And as always, thank you for your time. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week. This has been a Boatworks Today production.